You're listening to Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com. You've read the stories of the drivers and others involved in the sport that we all love. Now hear their stories firsthand via our all-new podcast to find out how their passion for motorsports has made life worth living. Dropping equipment already. Here we go. Equipment malfunction. Here we go. So, uh, before we get going, <clears throat> yes, I got the crud. Yes, Chris does have the crud. He's trying not to give it to me. I'm gonna be, I thought about wearing a mask. Well, yeah, I don't think I have that. I, I think I have. I, have I think not. I have like bronchitis or pneumonia. Oh, but great. I, I don't think they're communicable. You know, uh, nah, it's allergies. They could be. Ones. Hopefully, it's not bronchitis. So, two things. Number one, what do you think of the Chicago Bears shrine that you are now in? Uh, it's hard to sit down here when you're a New England fan. <laughs> but I mean, that's okay. It could be worse. At least it's not Philly or, you know. I love one it. Of those look at that. Teams, look, look how you know? big that Chicago Bears It is kind of cool. My dad was a Bears fan growing up, so it is kind of cool. <laughs> I could think of it as the Cubs, too. My brother's a big Cubs fan. Okay. So uh, yeah, yeah. We'll take that. So uh, the, we are here at the new K Vegas Behind the Wheel Studios. Uh, Chris Young, Ellen Richardson. We got another exciting episode of Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com coming up. And even more special, you're sitting in a special chair, and I bet you didn't even know that. I'm sitting in a special chair. It just feels like a folding chair. It, it's easy. <laughs> easy. That is the last WWF wrestling event oh my God. chair, the Survivor Series, before they changed the name to WWE. You are sitting... On collectible history. What do you think oh about that? Oh my God, I'm sitting in a wrestling chair, so it was it hit, did it hit anybody over the head? I mean, did my neck just get a little more red right there when I said <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah! They tell you, I was ringside at that event, and I stole that chair. <laughs> Is that where y'all got married? If, so if, for those who are listening, uh, Chris did just recently get married. So yes. Is that where y'all really got married? Did you get married in the middle of a wrestling ring? That's redneck. No, I wanted to, but it was something about liability. They wouldn't <laughs> let us do it. We actually got married here at the house. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you, and, and it rained on us. Oh, no. But I hear that's They say that's luck. lucky. Yeah, yes, yeah, they do say luck, that's right? very lucky. Yes. And, uh, you know, so kind of, we've had a lot of things happen, too. We yeah. had a couple of our drivers do pretty well. Yeah, it's actually been pretty exciting racing season so far. There's been a lot of stuff happening. Um, we've had a couple of past guests win. Tommy Johnson Jr. got a win, not this past week, but the week before. Uh, we even had Robert Height get a win this week. Nice. So, past champion. See, we're good luck. I know, that's we, right. We are the We omens. totally are. Eric Saunders, who, hey, is our paralyzed driver. We recently yes. talked to somebody like that yeah eric saunders recently got a win so that's pretty cool speaking of i saw mario bonfanti on uh social media yeah his he's uh, blowing up right he now. is blowing up his paddle drivers but i'm hoping that elon musk picks that up that would be awesome so that's kind of the the hush hush i think it's floating around hadn't right. been confirmed but right. I, I think that information has been floated up to him Hey, ever since our interview with him, it seems like everybody's been contacting media left and right have been contacting him. So See, that's great. the interest is out there. It's such a great thing. And, and yeah, if you haven't, check out Mario Bonfante Jr. What he's got is, is amazing. And speaking of amazing, uh, we got a new past, present, changed, updated <laughs> guest for today, right? Yes, I'm pretty excited. So those who have you <clears throat> been following behind the wheel for the last, I don't know, how many years have I been writing behind the wheel? I lost count. Six I don't years, know. eight years. I don't know, probably closer to eight. Yeah. Um, those who have you been following the feature series for that long, uh, we are bringing back a past guest, which we have done before with Valerie Thompson. Yeah. But this one has gone just a little bit further back. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked to this young lady when she was in her teens and is now in her 20s. And is blowing up the charts. Right. Uh, McKenna Hassey is not only a great racer and a great dirt driver, but she's even going to be featured on an NBC show coming up in the next week or so. So I'm very excited. American Ninja Warrior. Yes. Right? Yes. So Sassy she's Hassey. She's going to be a ninja next. That's she's her gonna next be, I know she's going to be. What? She's going to vanish? I mean, so I, Sassy I don't know if Hassey, she learns that. I wish she would teach it to me. Champion driver. Yes. And now she's. And you know, how do you train for American Ninja Warrior being a driver? I don't know. Like I'm like, how do you even have time? Because she's, you know, she's in her early twenties. She was going to school last I heard. Right. I mean, how does she have time to do this plus drive every weekend? She, plus, she owns her own race team, doesn't she? Well, she's actually training a lot of junior drivers right now. Okay. So she's helping a lot of drivers who were just like her right. come up the ranks. So not only that, she's a great speaker. She's out there doing a lot of public speaking. So I'm like, where she finds the time to sleep, I have no idea. Right. I'm excited about this one. I know. She's only 22 years old. And she's 22 doing years old. 10 times the stuff I was doing. I don't think I was doing anything 
remotely. I didn't even know what I wanted to be when I was 22. I, I, didn't even know where, I don't even know where I was when I was 22. I, was I, college, I know I was in radio. Yeah, yeah, same here. <laughs> I was in college and in the military and doing radio and drinking too much. I'm really. You were even sh- doing more than me. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm still alive, to be honest. I guess better living through chemistry back then. But that's going to be an exciting interview. We're going to learn about what it takes to be a champion. Yes. She also has a really successful financial backstory. Yes, she does. Which she's training people how to be financially independent exactly. as racers, which I know can be extremely difficult. Oh, very difficult. In today's Especially day and these age. days, yes. Yeah, because you know sponsorship money's not always there. No. You got social media, which helps out, but you know maybe taking a page out of that book could really be helpful to some of the folks who are trying to come up. And I'm excited to talk to her about that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because I wouldn't even know where to start it without sponsorship money anymore. Because right. that's where a lot of these racers have been able to come through the ranks right. these days. Unless you have a parent with a ton of money. But either even that nowadays, mm-hmm. it's still not enough money. It's oh. not enough to get you to the top. Oh, no. I mean, I'm just hoping she'll let me borrow some. I know, right? Let, let me I hold a dollar. Get me, get me some financial sound advice because my finances not, I, are do awful. You, you know how I am with advice. I already know everything. I'm not going to take any advice from anybody. Oh, my god! Just will you give me the money? <laughs> and they go, well, what are you going to do for it? I'm going to be me. Or just uh, give it to me. Uh, <laughs> I deserve it. I've earned it. Why should you have it, sir and ma'am? Give it to me. <laughs> I, I mean. You deserve it. That might be, why do you deserve it? <laughs> that might be, you know, come to think of it, that might be why I find myself in some of, some of the unemployment predicaments I find myself All in. All right. That's yeah. exactly right. Well, you know that and then misappropriation of vehicles, but we're not, <laughs> we're not really going to talk about that. That's been going on for years. It has. Oh, speaking of, i got to talk about blowing up the RV. Oh, yes. Chris recently blew up. Well, he was part of a video where someone blew up an RV, and I was wondering if it was going to be him blowing up that RV because I was like, what did he do with the explosives on so it? So we had this great team. It was for Gander RV. Mm-hmm. And every week in July, or every week in June, every Friday, they're going to launch these videos where we're literally blowing up RVs. I want to do that. That looks like fun. We were down in Florida at this horse ranch, and we had one day to shoot all this stuff. And the the tech guys were there, the fire marshals were there, the fire department, the police, the whole nine. The horses were spooked out of their minds. I mean, oh, could, I bet so. But, but they were Explosion? safe. Hello? They were safe. We had a horse doctor there, you know, so, so everything was safe. Um, but it was funny because we just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And at the last explosion, the guy with the special effects company, you know, he's wiring all this stuff up. And he comes back and he goes, was that three or six? And I'm like, three or six what? Now, we're behind this big, giant mound of dirt. With, Three or six. Right? With fire marshals and stuff like that. What are we that. talking here? Well, I asked him. I was like, what are you talking about? He said, was that three gallons of gas or six gallons of gas? Oh, God. And I was like, <laughs> I, brother, I, look. I'm, I hope it was three. Good Lord. I was like, look, man, I'm just a pretty face and a pretty voice. I don't know But see, if you're standing you close, about. that pretty face and pretty oh, voice. Oh, look, look, the, look, the burn would only make it better. There's <laughs> like, nothing you can do with this train wreck. <laughs> look like I ran a 100-yard dash in a 90-yard gym. So... He goes, gallons of gasoline. Three will blow it up. Six might cause an issue. Yeah, you think. And I was like, okay. Well, it was a big, giant Class A motorhome. Right. And you got to see the video. I did see one of the videos. So th- this will be the last video. This will be the last okay. video. I'm, I'm going to leave it right there because you got to see it. Oh, I want to see it. And let's just put it this way. My Uber ride got there right as this happened. <laughs> oh, my God. And bless his heart, we're in Florida, South Florida. And he couldn't speak English. Oh, no. So I tried to call him and warn him. But as he's pulling into the ranch, this thing goes up. He hauls butt right back out. Oh, no. And luckily somebody, <laughs> so much for that ride. Yeah, luckily somebody spoke Spanish, called him, and he, he thought it was a terrorist attack. He, of course he did. <laughs> he came back. I made it back to the airport in time to leave. But Oh, uh, my God. That's I, hilarious. Getting through TSA with all that stuff on me was... That was a I was going to say, I bet you smelled real good when you got there. Oh, it was beautiful. They broke out the salad tongs, and I was not a happy man. <laughs> put it that way. But when we come back, I'm excited to talk to McKenna Lee Sassy Hassy. you got to tell her her new nickname when we get on the phone. Oh, can I can I give her a new one? Can I just... No, I thought Sassy Hassy was her nickname. It, it is her nickname, right? Oh, okay. And it's, if not, it's going, well, it might be Ninja Hassy. Yeah, it might be. Hi. I mean, she's going... <laughs> Man, Full on ninja, I know. Yeah, who, who has a goal to do that? Really, I mean that's amazing. I can't even walk up the stairs. I just, <laughs> I'm gotta... walking the dogs. I don't. <laughs> I mean, listen to me. I'm coughing now, just sitting here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so coming up next, right here on Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com.
Attention racers, race fans, and gearheads. If you're looking to buy, sell, or trade the stuff that stokes your engine, then check out RacingJunk.com. RacingJunk.com is the world's number one online racing and performance classifieds where you'll find what you need to rock your ride. Check us out at RacingJunk.com. Racing and performance classifieds built to go fast. So welcome back to Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com. Chris Young, Ellen Richardson, Lily. And joining us on the phone right now, I'm super excited because not only because she kicked both our butts. I know, right? But she's done more in her short 22 years of life than both of us combined. Oh, she, she's done and, more in her life than I've done. I don't even know. Waking yeah, up. I just Probably all I don't my past lives. Yeah, all I my mean, past lives. Yeah, exactly everything. right. Everything. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> but, but we are super excited to have joining us McKenna Lee. Sassy. Cassie. Yeah, he's giving you a nickname. We discussed that right before we got started. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank now, you for having me. Every time I see your name, I, I see sassy in quotations. Why is that? Um, because most people don't know how to pronounce my last name. And so we just put that in there. Like, so <laughs> when they're reading across it, they get it. Um, and they wouldn't go Haas. But yeah, most people think it's Haas. Um, but yeah, or Hossy, but it's Hassy. Right. So yeah, like um, it. when they read the Sassy, it makes more sense. I mean, you know, Haas makes me think of avocados. So yeah, <laughs> well, it actually, everything makes me think of food. I'm I'm, I'm always hungry. But uh, so, but you're actually not new to behind the wheel. No, she's not. Um, McKenna and I spoke about four or five years ago um, when her racing career was really just taking off. And ever since then, I mean, you've done nothing but your career has done nothing but explode. I mean, it, it amazes me how quickly <laughs> everything has come across. Not only your racing, but you're doing public speaking. You're helping other racers, you know, come up in their career. And next, you're going to be an American Ninja Warrior. I mean, good God. Yeah, man. I <laughs> what, mean, what can she not do? I, I don't want to ask because, you know, I'm scared about robots coming <laughs> over anyway. But, you know, McKenna, kind of give us the background. How, how did everything get started? Because you've been racing since you were a kid, right? Yeah. Um, since I was 13, which is a little bit on the late side. Um, right. But I... Um, yeah, I got into it after most people know me for meeting Casey Kane in a shopping mall when I was younger. Nice. And um, and um, that's kind of what got me interested in the sport. And then um, I had a cousin that started racing on dirt, and that's kind of what led me to youth racing and found a track near my house. Kind of a long story, but anyway, started my own race team when I was 13. So why sprint cars? Um, because I live 30 minutes from Sprint Car Capital of the World. That's a okay. good point. That's good. So why not I mean, tackle how do you, and take over? I mean, still, know. I mean, even if you had that goal to do that, not a lot of people jump as fast to Sprint Cars as she has. I mean, for instance, like what she said, when originally McKenna and I uh, spoke with her original story, she mentioned to me that she met Casey Kane. That was a big reason she wanted mm-hmm. to go racing. Her parents didn't race, um, although her cousin did. Her parents didn't. Um, and a lot of times... Uh, kids her age or the youth her age that are wanting to go racing, you know, they they have a parent who is right, raised or right. at least an uncle or an aunt, right. someone really close, even though her cousin is close. Um, so her big thing was she met Casey Kane in the shopping mall, and not only that, she saw him race and decided she's going to go racing too. I'm gonna but try that. Yeah. She didn't go NASCAR racing, which she could have done, right? Because Casey doesn't race dirt. Yeah, no, yeah. So, he's, I mean, he's afraid of dirt. You well, see him? He's too ever, pretty. He ain't got no dirt on him. He is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and I've actually met him. He still looks like he's 13. <laughs> he found the fountain of youth when he was five. <laughs> right. I mean, and, so. and you've done some pretty phenomenal things uh, driving sprint cars, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um. Yeah, I've had five wins at Knoxville since I started there when I was 17. Mm-hmm. So my first win came when i was 18 so it's wow. been a pretty good run mm-hmm. wait a minute pretty good you got to tell us what else you did at knoxville come on don't be don't be modest yeah she was the only fem- um, first female driver to win there yeah yeah and broke yep. the track record yeah I mean, yep. how did now how did that feel oh i mean it all feels good like i think you know it's hard because when i got my first one i was 18 it was like a big deal because that was like the first one for a female. It was kind of all over everywhere. And then I think some people still kind of doubted it a little bit, though, just because it was a 305 win and it was just one win. But then I went on to get two more wins in the 305 class. So I think that gave me 
more respect. Um, I broke reading a lot of features in that class, so yeah. um, wish we could have had a couple more, but we ended up moving up to 360, and then I won twice in that class, which I think um, really helped solidify it. And right. um, yeah, and then I've had you know some quick times there, and it's like a lot of heat wins and a lot of good runs um, at, at like some of the bigger shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean I'm very blessed and grateful to get to race there just because that's some place that I uh, can't really say it was like a dream of mine to race at because right. I just didn't think I would ever be more than a fan. Um, and so yeah, like I always could ask like, well, back then did you dream of owning your own team or did you dream of racing with the outlaws? And I was like, no, because <laughs> you know like that wasn't my role like my role was to be a fan and right. um obviously that would have been amazing but it just wasn't it was something so far out of the box that i knew you know even at that age at the age of like 10 11 i knew how much those cars cost and i knew that was never going to be <laughs> something that i would be able to do but somehow the stars aligned speaking of that i mean so many of the drivers that we talk to have such a rich family history of driving and they have these you know pretty nice size sponsorships what was it like for you a seeing some of those folks going up against them but b having to scratch and grind and do it on your own oh my gosh it's been <laughs> um a lot of work <laughs> a lot of work in fact uh this past week even everybody's like why does your voice sound so groggy are you sick i'm like no i'm just exhausted like i'm always exhausted i feel like from just working so hard to keep the team up and running and out there. And even to this day, you know, it's amazing how, um, like having a family that it wasn't always into racing still is like in some ways a challenge and in some ways a blessing. Like I'm actually grateful because, um, it's really pushed me to just find my own purpose in life, my own dream and to go out and like make the connections and meet people and talk to people like, I had to, like, I couldn't just rely on my parents. And I think when you're a kid, that's something that's easy to do, obviously, because yeah. they provide for a lot of other things. And so it's easy for your dad to say, oh, I'll call my buddy or I'll call so-and-so and this guy I know and get you this opportunity. In fact, I own my own driver development program, and that's what I do for my kids. Yes. And it's, it's hard for me, even in that setting, I do make them go out and get their own sponsors, and I make them do their own work. But it is easy for me to pick up the phone sometimes and make a call and make something happen for them, you know? And I'm happy to do that because I love them and I care about them. And I would imagine that parents in motorsports feel the same way. Um, but I'm just grateful that I had um, just kind of like the, like the, you know, not that support from my parents. And on the sponsorship side, it's still a struggle, you know? I mean, it is hard, but yeah. my parents are really supportive and wouldn't be here today without them right. um but it is you know i mean for me what i don't i don't i try not to be jealous regardless like i'm very grateful of the opportunities right. i've been blessed with mm -hmm. um but if i had to pick something that really makes if i had to pick the thing i'm jealous of most it's not um it's not anybody else's money it's not anybody else's equipment or big fancy rigs or anything like that like that's not anything i don't believe money buys happiness and um obviously those things are nice and anybody would take them if they were given to them but for me what what sometimes has been hard for me is um just the inability to like my dad's always been my best friend so the inability to learn things from him in racing or mm -hmm. to see other kids just being able to ask questions honestly like i grew up racing with guys that were on the outlaw tour or just tough you know right. sprint car drivers that i looked up to that aren't always the most approachable people and so it was nerve-wracking to ask them the questions that i wanted to ask and to learn and that was you know knowledge is something i'm always hungry for and so i think to this day that's always been hard for me is like when i want advice it's like who can you trust or you know i feel, always feel like i'm bothering somebody or whatever and so i think that's always wow. been one of the toughest things. But. I bet that was tough, especially because you do yeah. want to look to your dad as that mentor, but you know, when they're not the subject matter expert, yeah, that, that is kind of tough. But And a lot of these older drivers, especially, you know, some of the male drivers, when the females come in, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm still seeing this to this oh, yeah, day. Oh, sure, yeah. You can go to a racetrack and you get these females in and these guys are like, who do you think you are? Yeah. And who, why are you asking me questions like you think you can beat me? They get, I'll, I mean, yeah. no offense to men, sorry, but you guys know who you are out there, so if you're listening, I'm sorry, I'm calling you 
out. Don't, don't, don't apologize. I know how great I am. I'm fine. <laughs> but, I mean, I, even as a reporter, you know, I'll go down in the pits and try to talk to some of these male drivers, and they're like, they're not going to give me the time of day because I'm a female reporter. Right, right. So I know that the female drivers are feeling the same pressure, yeah. much more pressure than I could ever feel. Here's what I don't get. McKenna, you're what, 22, 23? 22. 22. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she's 22. Mm-hmm. She is already owning her own mentor program where she's helping other people. I know. Chris Owns was over here blown. His eyes got huge. That I, was fell out of his head. I am double your age. I don't even own my own car. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. Is this how? And, and then I saw something that really stood out to me. And I was like, wow, this is a special young woman right here. Yes. Uh, you actually did a, I believe, a write-up and a speech on how to become or how to be financially savvy as a racer. Tell me a little bit about that because that's something that a lot of drivers this day and age struggle with. Yes. Yeah, so I got into, I've always been into business and I started studying the stock market a little bit in third grade, but mostly when I was like, you know, in high school, early years and went on to be a finance major in college and really? um, was president of the investment club at Drake University and stuff like that. And so right. I've always been into finance and money. Um, and so I got into racing after that and run you know, my team and everything. And I think, you know, really money is something that a lot of people don't want to talk about because they think that it's, um, you know, just like a personal topic, which to an extent it is. But I really believe that um, obviously racing is really expensive and I think it needs to be talked about, honestly. And I think um, that it's okay, you know, to explain like not only how to get sponsors, but also just like, you know, don't look at everybody else's team and try and figure out their financial situation. Like right. really focus yeah. on what you can do and how you're going to do it and then be grateful for that. And even I struggle with that. Like I'm blessed with amazing sponsors that I'm super grateful for. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I was never, never my wildest dreams would I think I'd have the money to race a sprint car. And so I'm very grateful you know, that I get to race a sprint car about 20 times a year. Um, but the problem becomes when, you know, I am trying to do this professionally and I'm competing against drivers that are racing 50 to a hundred times a year. Yeah. And that if it costs X amount of dollars a week to put your, or a race to put your car out on the track. And so it's easy for me even to say like, Oh man, like I, you know, wish I could race more. You know, you always wish you could have more mm-hmm. and it, you know, that goes all the way up to the cup levels too, might I add. I mean, even cup teams are searching oh, yeah. for money. Um, as, you know, as much as your local go kart yeah. team. Yeah, exactly. And so I think it's a matter of. Money. <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say, yeah, the whole right, thing exactly. is looking for money. I mean, yeah. they, they called me so, asking if I could spare $5. I'm like, oh, no, bro, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it's a matter of like being honest with yourself about like what is your financial situation like. And, you know, don't, don't go. I mean, there is a fine line, you know, between going too far and, um, and just your own financial security. And you do have to take a lot of financial risk. I mean, even me personally, it's like, you know, I shoot, you know, I can pick between trying to be a sprint car driver or going and getting a finance job or something. And, um, you know, I mean, there's, it, I don't even second guess it. Like the finance job is not even on my radar whatsoever. Wow. Um, but you know, with that, it's, it is, it's a huge financial (laughs) cut obviously. And, um, and you know, it's risky. I mean, you don't know where you're going to finish every week or even if you're, if you're going to get rained out or if you're going to crash or if you're going to win. I mean, there's a lot of risk there. And even for people that aren't doing it for a living, um, or are taking it out of their own personal pocket, um, just wherever your money's coming in, be honest with yourself and then however you're going to spend it be realistic and then you know be grateful see and i you know i hate to see these families that are just blowing through you know everything and selling their home and their you know everything just to race and um this is where yeah, I've gone don't wrong. don't go too far yeah this this is where i've gone wrong i lie daily about money um <laughs> probably just I, I don't report hardly anything i i spend like i don't the have IRS it is listed. you know hint, hint Hence that that wrestling chair you're currently sitting in and this gold-plated microphone. I I mean, McKenna, if if you could give advice to someone who's trying to come up, because it is a struggle, it is a grind, you're right, and that's a a lot of times things that people don't see. What would be a word of advice you would give to a young driver trying to make it? Well, um, I mean, I would say from a financial perspective, you know, if you want to race – 
like literally all the way up through. The money has to come from somewhere, mm-hmm. like for everybody. So you hear these stories about drivers make it on talent or drivers, you know, make it paying their way or whatever. Really, at the end of the day, somebody's paying the bills regardless. And so if you're going to make it on talent, you're going to have to have experience to show that talent. I mean, the drivers that make it on talent, they're racing, you know, all the way up through their childhood, getting hundreds of shows under their belt, most generally, and that costs money. And so you're either going to have to get a job and pay for it, or you're going to have to go out and get sponsors or a combination of both. And I have done both um, my whole life. And so um, I think that's the biggest thing. You're going to have to work hard at it. I mean, it's not going to come easy for absolutely anybody. Um, it takes me, you know, probably three to 500 approaches um, wow. for sponsors just to get like a batch for a season. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it's going to take work. And figure, yes. yeah. And so I think, you know, whichever way you're going to do it, just take your pick and then work really hard at it. And also your education is more important. I know a lot of racers don't (laughs) probably wouldn't say that, but like I will, and I don't just mean college. Um, I mean, elementary, middle school, high school, like really, really try your best in those years because honestly, like by the time I got to college, um, most of my, I felt like, you know, most of my learning and my training had come from those earlier years and the discipline and, and, you know, knowledge is power. And if you can be not just, you know, you don't have to have a college degree, but be smart and be knowledgeable and be, um, worthy of a paycheck. And if you can do that, like people will pay you to work. Um, and then you can have the freedom to do whatever you want with that money. Wow. Could you please say that to the throngs of people doing (laughs) duck lip photos on chat snap, please? Cause that, I mean, I would hire you in a heartbeat. I know she's out. She's saying that is such good stuff, but, but, but but here's okay. So here's what I don't get. She's more professional than most 20, 30 some year olds. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I don't get. You race. You built it from the ground up. Yep. You speak publicly, which is extremely well spoken. Yeah, spoken right here. Mm -hmm. Um, You went to a tremendous private university in Drake. And you still somehow found time to train for American Ninja Warrior. Uh, What? (laughs) Yeah, how did that happen? Because, I mean, when I got that announcement, I was shocked. And, of course, my editor was like, yes, jump on the news story because we need to get that out there. Yeah, when Ellen called me and told me the story, I just went, what? What? I'm sorry. Because, McKenna, how, dude? Yeah, I'm so not. Like, I just sit back every week, and I'm nowhere near as in shape as she is. I, of course, Emma's not going to trade me for American Ninja Warrior. But, you yeah, no, nah, nah, you kidding me? I just try to get my booty in shape because it's terrible. <laughs> they, they trade me for American Boodle Warrior. But yeah. I, I mean, my, my version of a sit-up is getting out of the chair. I mean, seriously, man, how did you – where did this come about? Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I'm still asking myself. <laughs> I I can literally remember standing there backstage when I was getting ready to walk out for the show for my intro just literally standing there asking myself like how on earth did I end up here (laughs) like what am I doing right now I literally felt like I crawled through the TV screen and was just randomly on this TV show it was crazy (laughs) I dreamt of Um, doing some of that but it hasn't been on like some like some poltergeist joint (laughs) Sally's in the TV I thought about several shows I'd like to jump into you know (laughs) hell I wanted to jump into the Super Bowl and ring some of my players next like what are you doing (laughs) why are we not winning more right now <laughs> so, so you're standing backstage at american ninja warrior what in the world is going through yeah, your right. mind oh gosh um just honestly i was trying to stay relaxed like more than anything and just enjoy it and cherish it it's so hard because given i say that i felt like i just crawled through the tv screen but in all reality like you know ever since i turned 17 i mean i've been athletic my whole life but i really started training hard when i got into sprint car racing and when i went to drake i mean i practically tried to kill myself every day in the gym like i would just do ridiculous like one to 300 push-ups a day and sprint up and down the football field so i couldn't move pretty much or run the stadium steps or Mm. swim laps or i mean i would just do absurd amounts of things and um i came across ninja warrior training like a year and a half ago and I started doing that. And I remember I walked in the first day and just seeing like the apparatus, which now I laugh now because compared to the actual show, like the the apparatus in the gym isn't 
isn't nearly as big as that. Um, okay. But that day it was like towering, and I got humbled in a hurry. Like I thought I was like strong and fit until I went to Ninja Warrior training, and like first day I couldn't move. I mean, you're always hanging from your fingers, like you're having to fly and like launch your body. Mm-hmm. Like some guys can now fly up to 20 feet on the show. Like, holy um, smokes, just crazy amounts of stuff and crazy grip strength and you know obviously the warp wall is 15 feet and so just just crazy and over time like i gradually got better and i was so embarrassed when people would like ask me about if i was going to be on the show because i'm like no i mean that's like playing football in your yard and then somebody coming up being like hey you're going to be in the super bowl it's like no (laughs) um and so like that was me and then they opened a new gym in my hometown and i went and that was the first time I made it up the 15 foot warped wall. And there was a girl there at the open house who had been on the show. She was like, Hey, you should apply for the show. Like, you know, you'd be really good. And I was like, you know, yeah, right. And she's like, no, seriously, like you could definitely, you definitely do it. And so I started training there with a team and we all trained together and we all applied for the show and a few of us made it on and um, yeah. And here we are. And so it's, super crazy but it's now become like a huge huge part of my life i mean it's like literally has a lot of similarities to sprint car racing especially when it comes to the competitive aspect of it and the sport aspect of it like it is a full-blown sport for us like there's a lot of technique a lot of training a lot of sacrifice involved um and uh yeah and the show does a good job of like balancing the competitive side with the entertainment so to america it's this really entertaining awesome show but to us um, yeah, it's it's fun for sure, but it is like we train all year for that. I mean, we spent hours upon hours in the gym for what less than a couple minutes on an obstacle yeah, I was course. Say, well, yeah. So, two, yeah, two minutes to hit a buzzer. Yeah, yeah, and so it's a lot of work for just a little bit of time to shine. So what you're telling um, me, but is, man, like what a cool thing to be a part of. So what, so so what you're telling me is you did not get the fifty dollar American Ninja Warrior kit from Walmart. <laughs> Because that's what I was thinking about going and getting. So so I could be up there. Oh, Lord. I have a headband. I mean, I'm start, that's, oh that's, that's a good start. Chris I got a headband. Fall on the first whatever jump or whatever you have to do, Chris would fall right in the water or Are whatever Are you kidding me? Could you I'm imagine my outfit this for one. this? Oh, my oh God. speaking of, did you did you get like some wild outfit for this? Like, 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 like your racing outfit or did you get like a big scoop on the sprint car? <laughs> um, I did. So I... I think I am allowed to say what I wore because of the fact that they've already shown a little sneak peek. Okay, um, okay. But I, I do uh, walk out on the course in a fire suit helmet. So. Nice. That's awesome. Got nice. Yeah. Love oh it. Props. God, that's amazing. Yeah. That's Mad amazing. Props. Okay, yeah. So American Ninja Warrior, it airs, uh, I believe it's coming up Tuesday night. Is it Monday or Tuesday night? June 24th. June 24th. Ju- June right. 24th on sure NBC. Right. And, you know, obviously they, they tape these. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they should. I mean, anybody who does who watches <clears throat> TV and doesn't realize that most of this stuff is not live. Most of the stuff Sorry. on TV is not live. Sorry, yeah. you're just coming in late Sorry. on this. Hate for to some burst reason. your bubble. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they do tell you what a show is going to be live, and right. there's very few shows that are live because well, they're scared of what people might say. I've also found those are the same people that think the moonshot's fake and wrestling's real. Right. So, which is fine. <laughs> which is fine. My grandma believed it was real. Um, so yeah. So so we're not going to talk about the results. No, we're not we talk don't want about, to. No, but don't burst bubble. were you proud of your performance? Don't um, get her in trouble. Yeah, I mean, I was proud of it. I feel like it's a sport where. Um, you know, they make it so, like, you can just keep going on and on and on. You know what I mean? And so, like, I think every ninja wishes they could have done a little better, but you still have to be great. Like, I was so grateful for how well I did, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm betting you did amazing, and I can't wait for us to see this because, I mean, I wouldn't even – if somebody called me a ninja, I'd be like, what? I'd be like, excuse you? You mean that I can kick a wall and hurt my foot? I mean, what? I, I would just mean – does that mean I can just disappear and get away from this situation? Right, because yeah. that's what I would like to do. Smoke bomb. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, so so when you get done, do you get like a, a sword and a like sword? Some, some bento shoes? or and a, and a I mean, do you at least sword? get a gift certificate to Benny Hanna's? I mean <laughs> – what do you get when it's all said and um, done? 
Well, you either get anywhere from a towel uh-huh. with the American Ninja Warrior logo on it that you get if you get wet. Okay. Or you get a million dollars on the other end of the spectrum and okay. pretty much anywhere in between. Uh-huh. Everybody gets a free water bottle. Oh, oh. free water bottle. <laughs> That's what we bought. Me? And a I banana and an apple. <laughs> and an apple? And an apple. And a banana, and, yeah. And a banana, not an apple. Are they ninja apples oh. and bananas? <laughs> Nope, there's just a little goodie bag. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you got closer to the million dollars. But yeah, that's okay. yeah, don't tell too. us because we don't want to spoil yeah, no, it. Yeah, no, please don't. But along with, I mean, along with everything else she's doing, she owns her own race team. I saw that you signed a new young driver, so you'll have to tell us a little bit about him. Um, you also have become a pr- pretty famous public speaker. Tell us a little bit about your public speaking and how that's going and where your goals with that are going to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it kind of just started like a snowball effect. Like I would speak at events and then the people in the audience would tell their organizations, like, you need to have this girl come and speak. And so I've just been going around speaking. I feel kind of bad because, like, I've never had any coaching or anything like that. And I'm not always the most, um, you know, like theatrical speaker or, like, you know, I just kind of share my story. But uh, the audience seems to like it. And so I just keep working on improving and trying to take it to – I really want to take it to new states and things like that because a lot of people in the Iowa like know me. Maybe not everybody knows my story, but a lot of them do, and just things like that. And so I'd love to take it to cities that don't know sprint car racing as well and yeah. don't know me as well and just honestly share my story with the world. And it's exciting now that I've been on uh, American Ninja Warrior so that I can include that now in the speech and just the lessons I've learned in both areas. But, I mean, my goal is to really just do that. Like, I've always had a part-time job outside of racing. Mm -hmm. Um, But now that the racing has really taken up so much of my time with um, my new foundation, the driver development program, my sprint car racing, and then the speaking, my goal is to have, like, the speaking, um, you know, carry enough weight to where I can do that and race and live life, I guess. (laughs) I mean, training junior drivers plus public speaking, I mean, it's – Yeah. I mean, with hearing you say you had no formal training really – is like kind of ticked me off because I'm like she speaks so incredibly well I I came from South Boston Virginia thank you did you know the beatings I had to take to be able to speak the way I speak now good grief girl why didn't the ward go through that training oh lord bless his heart some people can't be helped that's just so so I mean so when you're doing the public speaking engagements do you get to do some of the American Ninja stuff do you like (laughs) he just wants to know if you have smoke bombs that's all like yeah do you break a cinder block with your butt I mean what like what do you like grip two coconuts and crush them I mean <laughs> Tell me some of this. I mean, that's dude. This guy. Oh man, I want to see this now. <laughs> Chris just wants to be a ninja. I think he just wants so I, bad. He watched Kung Fu Panda recently, and yes. he just wants to be that. That's all. And Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> so we know the show's nothing like that, but for some reason, Chris in his mind thinks that's the kind of training. You're I've seen to. every Shaw Brothers movie on the planet. <laughs> I know it's got to be a little bit of that. I don't think it's Look, I got like the five deadly venoms. I bet I could go on there and do pretty well. <laughs> they don't throw ninjas throwing stars at each other. <laughs> they don't? No. Do you get like the big Kimbo sticks? No. Have you never watched this show? I have watched this show. I love it. It's like it's like CrossFit on crack. Exactly. That's exactly what it's like. So, hey, the fact that they can run up this ramp amazes me. Like, yeah, I, I, would, I can't do that. I'd take one step, fall over. And trying to jump and go across water and all this stuff. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, McKenna is obviously extremely well-trained, extremely well. I mean, you're exactly. fit as a fiddle, um, which I'm sure helps out in the racing arena, too. But how do you incorporate that into public speaking about racing? What What are the correlations there? Um, between the fitness aspects, you mean, of yeah. both? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's always difficult to get people to like fully understand it. But what I typically tell people is, um, well, first off, ninja and racing are both like very short, well, for sprint car racers, I guess, Mm -hmm. very short, very intense competitions. And so you actually have to have really good cardio in both of them, even though it's like a very short period of cardio. And so, hence a sprint car race, but... Um, so you have to have good cardio and you have to have just like fast reflexes, um, good grip strength, like on the wheel versus like good grip strength in the ninja gym. Right. Um, the pedals in a race car, like resistance bands, you have to have good leg strength, not as much as arm strength for ninja, but like for the warped wall and things like that. Sure. Um, and you gotta have 
in Ninja, you have to have a really strong core and neck to be able to fly far. And then I use that in racing in order to like stay up in the seat and fight the forces and stuff. And wow. so they really do um, cross over pretty well. And for me, Ninja's like hands down the best probably the best form of working out that I've ever done oh, like for sure. anybody in fact I do train with people that you know are just parents you know that aren't I mean trying to be on the show but just as a workout and mm-hmm. you know the thing about the obstacles is like do as much as you can do you know like you like ninja is a great sport that can accommodate every single level right. um, and helps you get stronger over time so so you you recently brought on a new driver right do you make your drivers train like you do do you put them through the ninja courses i mean do you just do do you drill sergeant on them i think you need to at least get them fit but i mean i think at first you need to teach them how to become a good representative for a sponsor i would think but i mean you tell us mckenna yeah so we focus um on business life Mm -hmm. um and racing which the life aspect includes um faith development and stuff like that and then um so yeah, we do like business and marketing and obviously driving, which we just filmed a little uh, short film with Fox Sports last week and nice. um, this girl's they were filming second. some of the, yeah, they were filming some of the drills that I do with my drivers, um, which oh. they were joking, kind of looked like the karate kid type. Oh, <laughs> so you make them snatch um, a pebble <laughs> or throw the big giant clay pots no. in water? No. Or do the white song? Uh, song? There, there, yeah, there is some of that type of stuff, so you'll have to watch it. But do you um, hit no, them I mean, with Kimbo sticks. Actual, I mean, did you no. just go Mr. Miyagi and just yaga yeah, 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 I mean, <laughs> no, oh. definitely not. But I do, um, I do train. Like I, I actually, so I have a couple kids that do that are incredibly just athletic. Um, I have two kids that are heavily involved in sports of like every kind both of them are wrestlers one's a boy one's a girl my little girl is incredibly ripped um at like the age of 10 and a very good wrestler like whoops up on all the boys um but my other kids um (laughs) are actually slowly getting into the working out stuff i try not to push it too much at a young age if they weren't interested in it because i didn't want to burn them out but the older they get the more they're starting to realize um, that the faster their cars get, that the more of a workout it is. And so they're starting to realize that they need to spend some more time in the gym. But I've been patient with them on that. I, I can only imagine. Mind. I mean, could, she, she would okay. be, I would be embarrassed if she were to see how I work out. She'd be like, you need to push yourself so much harder. So oh, you, my gosh. You, you know how alpha male drivers are anyway. Oh, yeah, of course. Could you imagine walking in? Here's McKenna, who we're going to talk about social media here in just a second. But it's just this extremely pleasant-looking, pleasant-sounding, well-spoken individual. And then she goes, okay, now we're going to do some physical fitness. And she starts kicking your butt. And those guys are like, oh, yeah, what's this little thing going to tell me? I don't know. We're going to do some push-ups and some jacks. sit-ups. Yeah, next thing you know, you're standing on top of a 20-foot pole, one-footed, trying to crane kick. <laughs> oh, I would love it. I would cry, but I would love it. <laughs> I would actually love to see her with a group of guys. That I would are too. All drivers. Can you film that for us? Uh, yes, please do. If you do, <laughs> not young kids. I want to see you in front of a bunch of these old guys who are yeah. all getting overweight because they're all running stock cars. These and alpha males. Yeah, who think just put them in that place. Could you film that for us? Uh, please. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. Sure, I'll do my best. <laughs> that would I be mean, amazing. I mean, you know, you got Fox Sports coming at you. You're going to be on NBC. You got, you know, all these yes, winning races, next. breaking records. My thing is, you're already doing a, you're already doing the public speaking circuit. You already are training drivers. You're already helping people with their financial situations. God, and, what's next for her? Yeah, what's next, man? Yeah, I got to know this because I, I can't even imagine what route to take next, other than she could be, you know, a famous public speaker. President. And, well, yeah, I'd vote for you. <laughs> Better than the president we have now. But Let's not even get into that. But, I mean, she could be a famous public speaker. She could get out there. And, I mean, she's inspiring these young kids already. I think she needs to get out there and inspire other women that, to yeah. do all these things, not only become an, all they a racer, but story. become an athlete, become yeah. who you've dreamed of becoming. I mean, a lot of women are afraid to become who they want to become. So so what is next for McKenna Sassy Hassy? <laughs> Um, I would say in racing, like I love racing in Knoxville and I'm very grateful for that opportunity. And I love the fans there tremendously and just everybody. But 
Um, one thing I've always wanted to do is just to take what we have and like travel, you know, and race nationally um, in anything, whether it's midget, um, sprint car, stock car, um, stock car on asphalt, that is. But yeah, just any of that. Like, I just want to travel and just meet fans across the country um, consistently. Like, we do go out and travel during the year, but just to be able to go to these tracks consistently and just travel and race is something that I've always wanted to do. Um, outside of racing, yeah, continuing the speaking. And I just started this new foundation um, called Youth Racers of America. And it's a 501c3 designed to give, um, to provide camps, clinics, safety grants, and educational resources for youth race car drivers nationally. Wow. And so our vision is for it to be similar to like U.S. Kids Golf, U.S. Kids Basketball, pretty much all those national overarching organizations. Um, and also to provide like outreach. So if you're watching NASCAR and you don't like, I mean, there's literally zero hub to go to if you're interested in getting your child started racing. There's obviously youth sanctioning organizations, but those are competitive competitive with each other and this would be all in one and it would also create a foundation for every form of motorsport which would allow um the higher sanctioning bodies like nascar and world of outlaws and nhra all of them to be united pretty much it's like the one thing that could unite all of motorsports and so that's big amazing. vision that's but, she's gonna be the um, president of that that's her yeah. next step she's gonna <laughs> help all these young drivers who think that their dream's dead because i mean you keep hearing about all the, I mean, even myself, I felt it, you know, and a lot of us with racing junk have seen a lot of these sports finding their end. Yeah. Um, racing has been taking a huge hit over the last, I'd say, some, probably five to eight years. Yeah. Um, you know, you keep seeing tracks being sold left and right. Mm -hmm. We had a story about a track being sold the other day. Um, you see tracks shutting down. You see drivers stopping. You see drivers retiring long before you thought they would. Yep. Um, I mean, was I shocked when Courtney Ford says she wanted to retire? Yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing to me that a lot of the people that are stepping away from racing because they see the sport faltering and they don't see the sponsors coming in. You see sponsor stories left and right of them dropping out of racing because it's just not hit, hitting their marketing budget. Yeah. So to have an organization that could be the saving grace for this sport, that's her next step. And yeah. you watch, she's going to save the oh, sport. Oh, of course she's, she's got a financial background, man. She's got this. Cause yeah, that's, that's she's really going to be now. the saving grace the sport's been looking for. She's so McKenna, I do. Do you have social media? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> do, you, do you have the the Instagrams and the Twitters and the chat snaps and the, and the, and the book face? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so yes. Look, look, I am proficient. At yes, the social you are. Media. Yes, okay. you are. I am savvy. actually more so than I am because so, I don't do the snatch chaps. I, me either. I tried, <laughs> but apparently everything I get is just like shots in my nose. I don't know. <laughs> Please, how can we find you? How can we go about finding more information about you? And how can we help McKenna? Um, so my website is uh, McKennaHassey.com. It's H-A-A-S-E. And my Facebook page is... It's under my fan page, McKenna Hassey. My Instagram is sassyhassey55, and my Twitter is McKenna Hassey. So you can follow me on all of their, um, those outlets, and then my email is also on my website, too, for any speaking inquiries, um, sponsorship inquiries, or um, anything youth motorsports related. Dude, that's, that's awesome. Amazing. Yeah, I was going to say, so if somebody wants to sponsor you, all they got to do is go to the website. Gosh. Yes, and we have sponsorships starting as low as like a hundred, two fifty, five hundred dollars. Wow, so. that's amazing! That's awesome. How do I get my face on one of the scoops? How much would oh, that God. cost? <laughs> you don't want his face <laughs> on the scoop, even if he had all the money what? in the world. It's it's not good. Like, you, look, it's just not good. It's look, look, not. Look. It'll scare everybody. Chris. I look like okay. So so just you know, in your mind's eye, I want you oh, to close no, your eyes to think about no. this real quick. I look like Keanu Reeves. No, he does not. And Sloth from Goonies had a baby, <laughs> but. I think my mama says I'm handsome. Uh, yeah, your mama feels yeah. bad for you. <laughs> she also has cataracts. But if, if we did want to sponsor, it's McKennaHassey.com. Uh, McKenna, you are just a tremendous spirit, a, a tremendous soul. She has done so much in the last like five years. Yeah. I'm just blown away. Let me tell you, I, I, you don't know us. We don't know you closely, but we are so proud of you, and we're so proud of what you're doing, and we cannot yes. wait to see what happens next for you, your career, mm -hmm. and what you do for the sport that you love. Good luck on American Ninja Warrior coming up June 24th. We can't wait to watch that on NBC. We're all going to be pulling for you. I'm yes. Team Hassey now. Oh, absolutely. So, 
Of course, I've been team happy, thank but you. even more so now. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and we're also going to thank be following you guys you on so Instagram. much. But McKenna, yeah. thank you so much for joining us, man. Please stay in touch. Uh, we'd love to try to get you back on in the future. And of course, obviously, if something happens or if you need us to help with anything, we are here for you. But I'd love to talk to her post Ninja Warrior. Oh yeah, just absolutely. as kind of a wrap up. Yes, we're definitely going to have to do that. You'll have to let us know. I mean, we'll we'll have to watch the show, and then we're definitely going to have to get you on for a few minutes just to go over what happened on the show. And if you did win. Can I borrow a dollar? <laughs> I can't oh my god! Can I, can I borrow the whole? Just uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Of Don't, just say no. Just you, no. You, you can help me invest it uh, in maybe a happy meal. Because <laughs> what? Course. I mean, she's no. She's, she wants you to get fit. Happy meals work good for you. I'm sorry, McDonald's. I'm not lying for you. I mean, <laughs> actually, yeah. Good point. She she would want me to get fit. Yeah. Actually, so she, she needs she, to buy you me. an apple instead. She see me and be like, "Wow, your dad bod is not." working at all we need to get <laughs> here take this medicine ball and run to canada and back so <laughs> mckenna thank you so much for joining us yes we uh, appreciate it. once again the website is mckenna uh please go support and sponsor her what a tremendous individual yes. uh we can't wait to catch up with you and talk to you soon thank you thank you guys so much for having me and for all your support i appreciate it thank it's you mckenna our honor we'll see you soon Okay, take care, guys. Thank you. You too. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me tell you, I've been holding that for the whole interview. Sorry. <laughs> Chris oh. is an old man with his hacker cough. <laughs> you think I smoke He's like you're dying? You think I sound like I smoke twenty packs a day? Yeah, you do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you sure yeah. you don't have emphysema? I don't. I don't know what I have, but I've, I've been taking the mucinexus, <laughs> and it's you know trying to get everything out. You know, all the the boys had the coughs and oh, whatnot, no. so it's been. It's just been one thing after another. You need a little McKenna Hassey training to kick that out. Of uh, you know what I yeah, think? So, do. I, you yeah, know, does, do. yes. The, let me. If if talking to McKenna Hassey is not a wake up call right. for everybody to get okay, get better finances, mm-hmm. get just be better health wise, but be a better individual. Yeah. She's twenty two and is kicking ass. I know. I have been done anything. I mean, she's even inspiring me. I'm like, I haven't done anything with my life. What is this? This is ridiculous. Who have, Whose life have I changed? Really? Your no. cats. So no, I don't have any cats. I have dogs. Your dogs. <laughs> my dogs. So do you think well, exactly, you changed the cat's lives into dogs. <laughs> do you think she won? Uh, it's hard to tell, and I don't want to blow. I have no idea. I have no I have idea. Not seen yeah, it. I don't know. She did not show us a sneak preview. We I'm have tell no you what, idea. If, I hope she did, but if she didn't, I'm betting she got near the finals. Oh yeah, I'm. And the only reason she wouldn't have won is because somebody older than her that might be taller than her might have won. Because she's also very short. Right. And is which still could come in her favor. favor. Yeah, actually, I've seen a girl about her size win this thing, and that girl was incredible. I mean, I think my husband was in love with her. So. Right. Right. <laughs> Let me tell he was you. trying to figure out where her phone number was. <laughs> Let me tell you. I mean, but you know, McKenna is striking. Yes. And you know, is extremely fit, extremely well yes. spoken. What a great personality. And there's few race car drivers who have done what she has done. I mean, yeah. especially dirt drivers. I mean, I love these dirt drivers. There are some incredible drivers out there. I mean, there's one right now that I'm thinking that we need to interview very soon. Okay. Get but I mean, he's he's incredible and he's blowing up the late model circuit. But. You know, that's all he's doing, though. No offense to, to the gentleman we're going to sp- hopefully speak to soon, but right. that's all he's doing is racing. She's doing... She's doing she's so much. She's going to college. She's helping financial, you know... She, Get people she financially has, savvy. She, has, she's, she does the stock market, Chris. I don't even understand my 401k. What? So, <laughs> when she said stock market, I ain't going to lie, I thought she said stock market. <laughs> and I almost was like, oh, Haynes Brands. <laughs> oh, God, that's how far off base I am with this. But yeah, no, right? No, McKenna. I mean, she knows how to help. She's going to save the sport. You guys yeah. make sure, if if you fast forwarded through this, go back, because McKenna Hassey's going to be the saving grace for the sport that's been losing money for the last 10, 15 years. And if they're not paying attention to her and getting her more involved in some of the decisions to change change the direction of the sport, they are wrong. Right. They need to get NASCAR it. NASCAR tune in. You found the person that's going to save your sport. Brian Fance, it's time to let go. So, <laughs> McKenna, thank you so much for joining us. Yes. And, and thank you guys so much for listening to us here at uh, Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com. As always, follow the podcast, yes. follow the website, follow us on social media, um, RacingJunk.com. The podcast is on iTunes, SoundCloud. Yes. Um, and if you have any suggestions for drivers, please hit us up. Um, not only that, drivers, other people that work in the sport we're also looking for people in the automotive world yeah so oh yeah yeah hit we, us up we've talked to fabricators we've talked to
talk to marketing execs. I mean, Absolutely. you know, we're, yeah, if, if we want the behind the scenes, which is behind the wheel. I mean, it's exactly. it's more about what makes it go as opposed to the guy with the pretty hair except in the trophy getting kissed by a Winston Cup girl. And that's what I'm going to call it. Don't you correct me. <laughs> hey, I'm cool with being Winston Cup. I wish it still was. So, uh, with that said... Uh, Ellen, tremendous job. As always, tip of the hat and kudos for bringing back the lovely and talented Ms. McKenna Lee. Sassy, sassy. Uh, I'm going to go follow her on Instagram now. And, uh, and don't perv her, Chris, please. No, don't, God, don't no. run her off. No, I'm married now. Yeah, no, I got. Yeah, your wife's watching, so just stop. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> look, yeah, look, you kidding me? I got the most beautiful That's woman right. on the planet. That's so, yeah. right. Absolutely. You do. I ain't even worried about that. Uh, but. Uh, she is amazing. I can't wait yes. to see what she does. So yes. uh, please hit us up. Send us questions. Send us emails. All the information is right there in the podcast and on racingjunk.com. So for the lovely and talented Lily Ellen Richardson, this is Chris Tater Young saying thank you so much for joining us here on Behind the Wheel on racingjunk.com. We'll see you next time.